I think it's fair to say that Manchester United's pre-season hasn't gone to plan so far with such little activity in the transfer window and results out in the pre-season tour not going very well. And as you would expect, the media are firing on Jose Mourinho, firing on Man United. And they are now starting to question whether all of this unhappiness from Jose Mourinho is the beginning of his exit strategy, that he wants to prepare to leave Manchester United. Do you think that is the case or do you think the media are blowing it way out of proportion? I want to discuss it in today's video. Now, suffice to say, the mood among Man United fans right now isn't the best. And clearly, it's not the best for Jose Mourinho either. You saw after the 4-1 defeat to Liverpool, he was not a happy bunny. And it wasn't as if he fired his criticism at one individual or one particular reason. He did it absolutely everybody. You saw Mourinho throw everybody under the bus in a mad 10-minute press conference after the game. You look at who he was talking about, lamenting the fact that most of his senior team isn't there after what happened at the World Cup. Obviously, the likes of Rashford, Lingard, Lukaku, Pogba, they're not with the squad yet. He's lamenting that. He's criticising some of the younger players, saying that, oh, look, I've only got 30% of the team I actually want to play with during the season, currently at my disposal. He had to go at the referee, he, he criticised Antonio Valencia, of all players, for not being fit enough during the pre-season tour, saying that he came back to the squad out of shape. Then he had to go at the referee. Uh, then he said that he should get his senior players back a little bit earlier. Then he praised Eric Bai for stepping in for Chris Morning at the last minute and then criticised him for not being good enough to be a leader. There wasn't many people, there weren't many players that were exempt from his criticism. And I want to know from you whether you feel that is your standard Jose Mourinho tactic of diverting attention as far away from possible from the result and bringing the spotlight on him and for all the newspaper articles to be about what Mourinho is saying rather than how this team is looking. Or is it indicative of an actual real sense of unhappiness from Mourinho that he really now in his third year is living up to the expectations of having a third season meltdown. I want to know what you think about these comments. Now, there are two ways of looking at this. You know, on the one hand, you say, look, this is typical Jose Mourinho. We've seen him do this before. We will see him do it again. It's his tactic to divert attention away from the players, just like Fergie used to do all the time. It was one of Fergie's best assets. As a man manager, it worked. And for Jose Mourinho over his career, it has worked. But some are saying that looking at uh, Manchester United's transfer dealings, that it's indicative of a wider problem that Jose Mourinho has with the club, and maybe more specifically, Ed Woodward. Now, he gave Woodward a list of five names at the start of the summer. We obviously got Fred, a central midfielder, and we got Delot, a fullback cover. But Man United desperately need a centre-back. We're all aware of that. Man United could probably do with another right-wing attacker. Who that fifth player is, I don't know. Maybe more central midfield reinforcement. Now, ultimately, the transfers are down to Ed Woodward to push through, and you're looking at the players that he's managed to sign for Jose Mourinho, Paul Pogba, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, Henrik Mkhitaryan, Romelu Lukaku, Eric Bai, Victor Lindelof, Alexis Sanchez. It's not as if Mourinho hasn't had the funds and the players to come through. And maybe, maybe it's Ed Woodward going, you know what, maybe I'm going to question some of your transfer decisions and maybe give my own input into it, even though that's really not your remit, Ed. I would understand if there was a little bit of trepidation given how much United have signed over the last few years and how little, I suppose, impact across the board those signings have had. Lukaku's been a success, Pop has been a success, Bay was a success to a point, but injuries, you look at Sanchez, you look at Lindelof, you look at Mkhitaryan, I suppose Ibrahimovic was a success as well and he was free. I can understand the concerns if Ed Woodward was saying, look, maybe we need to talk about it a little bit more. And the fact that this window really is a tough window because of the early closing of the transfer window and the fact that the World Cup happened as well. Both of those mean that United always have, or always had, sorry, very little time to conduct their transfers. And we see someone like Harry Maguire, a man United after him, 65 on million. Is it overpriced? Hell yeah, it's overpriced. Any player who plays good at a World Cup is going to be overpriced. Would he improve Man United squad? Absolutely. The quicker that we go away from having Smalling and Jones as our two effectively main centre-back options, the quicker we can move forward as a football club. And then you're looking at other reasons why Jose Mourinho might be slightly concerned or pissed off with everything that's going on. 
You know, there's a great article by Simon Stone of the BBC where he runs through, I suppose, analyzes everything. Make sure you check that out. I'll leave a link in the description. He's pointing towards Rui Faria's exit. Now, Rui Faria, as you all know, Mourinho's number two. Basically, throughout his whole career, he's at Real Madrid, there at Inter Milan, there at Chelsea the first time. He's always been there by his side, but because of family, he wanted more family time and he couldn't do, didn't really want the pressures of top level football anymore. Rui Faria has left the club and have been replaced by Kieran McKenna, who was our under 18s manager, brought in from Spurs, had a fantastic season with the under 18s, and Michael Carrick, who's there just like Ryan Giggs was under David Moyes to learn the tricks of the trade as a manager. Now, I think Michael Carrick will be a much better manager than Ryan Giggs. Intellectually, he's much more astute as a footballer. Uh, no offence, Ryan. But I think that's going to translate into making him a better assistant manager for Mourinho than Giggs was for Moyes. But Farrier not being there, is that another question mark as to why Mourinho right now is kind of acting like a sport teenager? Now, another reason why Mourinho might be getting so pissed off is maybe he's looking around at the rivals around him and saying, look, this is what's happening in the Premier League while me and United, we're sitting still. I think Liverpool, for me, are the only club that really have made massive strides forward in the market. They needed a central midfielder, got Naby Keita and Fabinho. Needed a new goalkeeper, they got Alisson. They've made fantastic signings in key areas that they needed to strengthen. But you look at City, they've got Mares. Great, they've got another attacker. They didn't need that. They were already top of the league, scoring goals left, right and centre. It didn't change much. It just increases the depth in their squad, which was already very good. Then you've got Arsenal. Brand new manager, signing experienced players, but huge question marks over what they're doing this season. Chelsea have only just about got Sarri over the line. And Spurs haven't signed anybody. So in that sense, United aren't that far behind. And if Popper plays better than he did last season... If Lukaku continues to play as well as he did last season, Bayer comes back from injury, Lindelof plays like he did for Sweden at the World Cup, and Man United squad, Alexis Sanchez, man, if he can start firing, Man United squad will do a hell of a lot better than we did last year, and we finished second. So in that sense, I wouldn't be too frustrated at the lack of activity, but it's more the fact that we had to close a, what, 20-point gap with Man City, and they've gone and signed Mares. And even if they didn't sign Mares, their squad was already 20 points better than ours. We need to close those gaps, close those points. And that's why we need signings. And that's why someone like a central defender is so important. Is it going to be Yerry Mina from Barcelona? Is it going to be Harry Maguire from Leicester? Either way, Man United do not have much time left. And as we saw in Marino's first couple of years, he likes to get his signings done as early as possible. Because then the players go on the pre-season tour and the squad's ready to gel. But I want to know from you, after all we've discussed here, all we've seen from Mourinho out on the preseason tour, his criticism of players, his criticism of senior players, younger players, of the media, of the referees, of everybody, of the sunlight, of the weather, of the colour of the grass over there. Mourinho has been just firing bullets everywhere. I want to know whether you think this is Mourinho cracking up and whether this is classic Jose Mourinho third season syndrome or whether it's just Jose doing what Jose does best and deflecting attention away from the negativity of the players in the squad and using that as his tactic. I mean, you look at the pictures of the players, they're smiling, they're happy in training. Is that their way of showing, look, we're behind the manager. We get what Jose's doing. Fuck the media, fuck the press. Everything is fine. We're not getting the players maybe we want in the transfer window just yet, but we're still happy. I don't know. There's certainly different ways to interpret it. And for me, it's not a black and white situation. It's massively grey. I don't know what's going on. You know, I are playing shit in the preseason. But there are a lot of players we don't have there. So I'm not too worried about the results. What I want to see is performances of individuals in terms of jetting into the team. Andreas Pereira has been a particularly good player on the preseason tour so far. I'd love to see him be part of the squad next year and not just shipped out on loan. Because if he is, that's the end of his United career. And I think he's got the ability to at least be a squad player, certainly, if Scott McTominay has apparently got the ability. But we've got a couple of weeks left in the transfer window. We still can get over the line with one, hopefully two, big signings. Mourinho said he only expects one at this point. If it is one, it has to be a centre-back. For me, centre-back is the biggest problem because United right now can't play out from the back with a ball. We have to fire it up to Pogba too quickly, who's too high up the pitch, and we left ourselves just 
loose in the middle. We need a centre-back, a ball-playing centre-back who can come out from defence with the ball to change that. Fingers crossed that could be someone like Maguire or Mina or anybody else. Let me know what you think in the comments. But more importantly, do you think Mourinho is preparing to quit Manchester United? Or do you think the media is just blowing this all out of proportion, just like they have done on so many occasions before? And this is nothing more than a bit of a hangover from the World Cup. And when our players come back, we're going to be absolutely fine. And that you're confident in the last couple of weeks we'll sign the players we need. Let me know what you think in the comments below. As I said, a bit of a debate right now. There are certainly different ways to interpret it. So let me know in the comments below. As always, drop a like on the video and subscribe to United People's TV. Take it easy.